Perth is said to be the remotest capital city in the world. Well, I can attest to that. Our flight from Hong Kong showed us the blue skies above the West Philippine Sea, followed by the most beautiful sunset over Borneo Island. During the last three hours of our flight, small towns punctuated the inky dark landscape from my view as dusk turned to night. Even our final approach, I couldn't discern a metropolis or a cityscape as it was too dark outside. That's how remote Perth is. Several assumptions about Perth had been plaguing my mind at that time as I exited the airport terminal. But as I embark on this solo trip, I'll see to it that whatever the outcome of this trip, I shall embrace it wholeheartedly. <laughs> or so I thought. In this vlog, join me as I explore Perth, Western Australia. So it's 11 p.m. <laughs> long day, long day. But here I am at Perth International Airport. Wow, this is surreal because I've been dreaming of visiting this place. So yeah, I'm thinking of just like taking a cab to my hotel, just like right the heart of, of Perth, like a central business district. So yeah, <laughs> I'm excited. Tomorrow is going to be like a chill day. Let's really chill because it's only 13 degrees here. Usually, I fly to either Sydney or Melbourne with a few side trips to nearby towns. I'm familiar with the Aussie lifestyle, but I still got caught off guard when I visited Perth. Okay, so I just arrived here at my hotel, at Pension Hotel, right at the heart of Perth. So this is just like a small room. I'll show you around. Immediately after entering the room, this is your view. And that's my bag. <laughs> There's a mirror. <laughs> So this is the bathroom. Oops, sorry about that. Yeah, it's um, it's pretty much standard and straightforward. So they already have the shampoo, body wash, and conditioner, a good shower, and a toilet. When you travel to Australia, they don't have any bidet. So I brought myself a portable bidet. <laughs> as an Asian, as a Filipino, you know. <laughs> this is the king size bed. Yeah, I got this bed all by myself for the next eight nights or seven nights. And I have a view, so that's a big plus. Yeah, actually Perth is a very sleepy city after 10 p.m. Well, it's actually almost midnight, but there's a bar below, so I might as well check that out because I'm in the mood to drink a beer or two. You know, just a celebratory thing that I arrive here safe and sound in one piece. Well, despite being the home of 1.5 million people and the capital of Western Australia, it is still a sleepy city. So I am now on my way to Perth Station, or what the logo say, Perth Station, because <laughs> I'm going to buy the transport card. So it's the equivalent of a Sydney's uh, Opal card or Melbourne's um, Mike card. It's going to be uh, one of my mode of transportation around Perth and nearby suburbs as well, riding the train. So yeah, today's a Sunday and it's, um, it's literally ghost town-ish. There are only a few people around and it's 12 noon. But yeah, it's a Sunday, so I guess it will be busier on weekdays. So I already bought the card from Transperth. It's uh, $10 for the card and $10 for the credit. So yeah, um, right now I'm at, at the, um, the Art Gallery of Western Australia. On my first day, I went around the CBD area to acclimatize to my neighborhood. I chose to stay right in the heart of Perth for convenience. So I, I've done a lot of stuff right now, but it's still 2.30 p.m. Although I've seen several people around the downtown area of Perth, but still the vibe here is even more, or shall I say, chiller than Melbourne or even Sydney because Sydney is the busiest city here in Australia. So right now I'm going to the largest musical instrument. Yeah, if I'm not mistaken, the largest musical instrument here at Perth. Check this out. I visited the Bell Tower, Western Australia State Library, and Perth's Elizabeth Key and walk around the downtown area. All right, so the ticket here at the Bell costs $10. So yeah, I'm making my way to the top of the sixth floor. 
and as the lady suggested, that I should go to the sixth floor all the way down to the first floor and just to see the bells and some art gallery stuff. All right, so if you're planning to visit the bell tower, be sure to be there from Wednesdays to Sundays because it's closed on Mondays and Tuesdays. So I'm here at Elizabeth Key. Behind me is the bell tower. Yeah, just had a tour earlier. Ticket cost $10. Anyway, so I'm here at the um, Elizabeth Key trying to figure out what I'm going to do here, apart from like sightseeing and people watching. <laughs> so yeah, I'm thinking of having late lunch somewhere at these cafes. Yeah, there's like a plethora of choices here. Okay, so it's almost sunset. Yeah, <laughs> it's obvious. Um, so I'm looking for some place to eat here at downtown Perth. Most of the shops and grocery stores closed at 5 p.m. Some coffee shops in the CBD area closed as early as 2.30 p.m. It was a Sunday, a weekend, so I thought it was normal. These are some of the things that baffles me here at Perth. So it's not yet 6 p.m. If I'm not mistaken, it's 5.40 p.m. But where are the people? <laughs> Look, this is like the core of Central Business District on a Sunday. It's supposed to be filled with people, but apparently everything's closed, including um, Woolies. <laughs> Well, fun fact, I was supposed to be at Woolies, but the um, store owner told me that it's already closed, so I'm not allowed to go inside. So, yeah, um, there's nothing much to see here <laughs> after 5 p.m. This is, this is weird, but in a good way. I love it. <laughs> I'm not sure if you can still see me, but anyway, this is Elizabeth Key at night. So there's this ferry um, taking all the passengers on the other side of the city across the Yuswan River. Ooh. Anyway, so this is downtown Perth at night. Very beautiful and quiet. <laughs> All right, so in today's episode of Where Are the People in Perth? <laughs> so right now, all I can hear are the cries of the crows. Or is it a crow? I don't know. I have no idea. But yeah, it's a weekday. There's like only a few people around and I'm here at the downtown part of Perth. But don't get me wrong, I love it here. It's so quiet, it's so peaceful. So if you're looking for some place with peace and quiet, then Perth is the place to be. The following day, I woke up late. As the usual travel at age goes, do what the Romans do. I decided to have brunch at a nearby cafe. Brunch is a thing here in Australia. So I had my usual flat white and chicken panini sandwich. Strolling around Perth at 10.30 a.m. was a sight to see. There were only a few people on the streets, primarily tourists. Perth had a different vibe for someone so used to massive crowds and traffic jams. Time was definitely slow here. I visited Hyde Park and Kings Park Botanic Garden to enjoy the laid-back life of Perth. So one thing that I really like about this country is that they have an abundance of parks, public parks. You know, you can always go here for free, you can go here for picnic, or you can just, you know, sit back, relax, and just enjoy the scenery. You know, enjoy the peaceful and quietness here. But to be fair, um, I think people in back in my home country are not a big fan of huge parks like this because you know it's always like 32 to 35 degrees and we kind of like hate that kind of weather but if you're here even if it's sunny it's only 18 degrees and i don't feel icky i'm i'm feeling comfortable right now so yeah um this is the perfect place if you want to just you know sit back relax and enjoy the nature Well, it looks like I'm the only person here in this pathway to the memorial um, statue. Yeah, whatever. But I'm currently here at the um, at Kings Park Botanical Garden. As you can see, um, when you take the bus from downtown Perth, it will drop you near the uni university, and then you have to walk all the way up. And I just realized that I should be here during sunrise instead of sunset because when you're at the Shrine of Remembrance um, overlooking the, um, the skyline of downtown Perth, it's facing east instead of west. So what's the point of going here 
during sunset, which is a huge, huge mistake that I'm currently doing right now. But whatever, I'm going there, eat some snacks, and then go back to your downtown area to have my dinner. And one of the benefits of traveling solo is that in case you get lost, the only person that you blame is yourself. But I'm not blaming myself of, you know, going here during the sunset. But I'm just here to, you know, to relax and just listen to the sound of nature is what you're hearing right now. Well, the view is actually worth it. <laughs> no regrets, no regrets. <laughs> so this is Swan River. This is part of um, Perth. Well, this is actually Perth, but this is like the other side of the city. So it's still a long way to the Shrine of Remembrance. So yeah, but I'm going to take a break, eat some snacks and just enjoy the view. I was craving for slower paced days like this as it allowed me to think and reflect on my life. The last day of being a 32-year-old lad was peaceful and reflective, accompanied by beautiful sunsets. Wow, so I finally made it here alive in one piece. Behind me is the State of Memorial. So I keep on saying earlier that it's the Shrine of Remembrance, but that's in Melbourne. But yeah, so this is the um, State War Memorial. It's a long hike from from the university where I alight from the bus. But yeah, the view is actually worth it, even if it's on sunset. Like, it's, uh, the sun is at the other side of the city, but wow, the view is so spectacular. Hi, good morning. So today's my birthday and let's make it more special. Let's go to Rottnest Island. No matter how perfect your travel plans are, some things are bound to happen, and it's no longer in your control. Ironically, it happened on my 33rd birthday. When I booked my Rottnest Island tour weeks before my birthday trip and the night before my tour, I tried to reach out to the operator since the pickup point showed in the app and the email confirmation was different. To make a long story short, I waited at the wrong pickup point and they left without me. To say I was disappointed was an understatement. It was 9 in the morning, but I felt defeated. I was supposed to be at Rodness Island, appreciating nature and possibly having selfies with the quokkas. But no, I'm sitting on the bench at Elizabeth Key, sulking. But at 33, I know better. It made me realize that things sometimes do not go as planned. I allowed myself to sulk and refigured my thoughts for a few more minutes before I finally decided to roam around the CBD area. Then, I found this part that resembled Diagon Alley from Harry Potter. London Court is a three and four level open roofed shopping arcade in the central business district of Perth, Western Australia. It was built in 1937 by wealthy gold financer and businessman Claude de Bernals for residential and commercial purposes. Hi, so another day, another adventure here at Perth. So yesterday was, you know, uh, all those shenanigans were not worth um, stressing out. But right now I'm walking to um, Barracks and Jetty Port and I'm going to meet up with a group. We're going to tour around the uh, Swan Valley uh, Vineyard Tour or stuff like that. <laughs> so yeah, I'm all dressed up because it's a fancy tour. So yeah, so I'm passing through the Supreme Court of Western Australia or is it the Supreme Court of Perth? Hmm. Anyway, so it's a beautiful park. It's a beautiful day. Actually, the forecast yesterday was supposed to be like um, rainy, but thank God it's not yet raining. <laughs> you know, the weather here can be quite unpredictable, but we'll see how it goes. I didn't bring my umbrella with me, so wish me luck. After all the hullabaloo's on my birthday, I went for a Swan Valley wine tour the next day. We went north of Perth and sampled some of the region's best wines. It was fancy, yet a fascinating tour. It was my first time to experience such a tour, as I had yet to try one in Melbourne or Sydney. Glad I made this trip as I learned more about the wine culture. So it's still like the second round of the wine tasting tour. <laughs> and I feel funny. <laughs> and after 18 glasses of different wines and two glasses of beers, I still managed to explore Northbridge at night with a friend. So I'm here at Bulls Creek Station and I'm waiting for the bus to the Australian um, Aviation Heritage Museum. <laughs> I think I didn't get it right, <laughs> but we'll get there. Last June, I celebrated my 10th work anniversary as an air traffic controller. 
True enough, time flies so fast when you are enjoying it. Instead of visiting Cottesloe Beach, well, we have many beaches back home and I bet it's more beautiful than this. I went to the Aviation Heritage Museum of Western Australia instead. Commuting there was easy and the ticket cost $15. This place is heaven. <laughs> As someone who works at the aviation industry, this place is, wow, a must visit when you're in Perth. So it houses like the, um, I think this is a World War II planes. Uh, yeah, wow. This, this is like the actual plane. And as we go on through different sections here, you can see a lot of um, uh, some historical um, pieces of the aviation industry. Technically, the aviation industry is only like fairly new. It only started like 100 years ago-ish. So yeah, a lot of things have changed. So many things have um, progressed. It houses many military and civilian aircraft, aircraft replicas, and aircraft engine of types that have served in the Royal Australian Air Force or have relevance to aviation in Western Australia. My AV geek heart was overflowing with joy. It made me realize that I made the right choice of choosing to work in the aviation industry. It was indeed a highlight of my trip. Hi, so I'm currently here at Fremantle. It's one of the oldest cities here in Western Australia. So I met up with my aunt and we had a lunch here. I had a fish and chips, you know, typical Australian lunch. <laughs> anyway, so um, I'm here for the ghost tour later, which, which is around like 6.30 and don't get fooled by the sun. It's only 12 degrees right now. I love the weather. As you can see, I'm wearing my favorite trench coat. <laughs> so yeah, I'm going to explore this little town. Fremantle was another vibe. Located 19 kilometers west of Perth CBD at the mouth of Swan River, this city is renowned for its well-preserved architectural heritage, including convict-built structures and hundreds of Gold Rush era buildings. So right now, I'm in the middle of the park here at Esplanade. Yeah, behind me is the, is the Ferris wheel. The ticket costs around like $12. I don't know if I could go there. But I'm thinking of going to the Fremantle Market. So yeah, I um, still have like four hours before my ghost tour. So yeah, this is a very quaint town. I love it. The weather's so good. So if you really wanted to go to Western Australia, the best season right now is during winter, which is right now. It's so cold, like I love it. It presents a variety and unity of historic buildings and streetscapes. Using limestones to build these ornate facades, the buildings come in various architectural styles. A rapid development following the harbor works led to an Edwardian precinct as merchant and shipping companies built in the West End and on reclaimed land. I stayed at their park, awed by the city's architecture, visited their shipwreck museum, well, admission is free by the way, and even went to Fremantle Prison's ghost tour at night. I always aim to learn more about my destination's history, heritage, and culture in every travel. Hello, so this is my last day here at Perth. It's really sad, you know? There's this um, bittersweet feeling um, a few hours before you leave this place, especially if you had a really, really great time. So um, done checking out with my hotel and I'm still waiting for, um, for my flight tonight at 11 p.m. So I'm just here at the park, staying here and just enjoying the um, the good weather. It's only 12 degrees right now, so I'm just reading a book. Yeah, I can't believe that this trip is over, officially over. But here's one thing that I can say. <laughs> if you have any chance or if you had the privilege to, to solo travel to a place that is so unfamiliar to you, where the culture is different, everything, everything's different, take it because who knows? Maybe this is going to be your last time uh, solo travel. You know, just take every moment in life and don't be afraid to, you know, get out of your comfort zone. That's one of the key takeaways from this trip. I have been constantly running all my adulthood, especially after finishing my degree at the university. I thought I'd figure out everything in life 
the moment I had a job and living independently. I have never slowed down, and this rat race has taken a toll on me. At some point, I felt alienated and isolated because of my inner demons. Sometimes, it is okay not to be okay. When we succumb to vulnerability, it doesn't mean weakness. We learn more about ourselves by acknowledging our strengths and weaknesses. The cacophony of a busy city inhibits one's senses. With open eyes, I could see nothing. I could hear nothing else. When we search for answers, we find them in solitude and quietness. It is in the quiet where we find solace in life. It is in the stillness that we become sincere with ourselves. And in silence, we realize that it has so much to say. The silence was its background. Quiet molded it. Stillness made it perfect as it filled the world. And that world is Perth. <laughs>